Hello, today I'm gonna talk about how to record, how to track into Protail tools using my ClearTM meter. Now I can connect my uh, ClearTM meter using AES cables, but I can also use the special plug-in mode and that's what I'm gonna do today. I have prepared a track here, I've named it Vocal and I simply insert my plug-in on the Vocal track. Bam! Here we go. My plugin says connected. On the ClearTM I can see that it says Vocal, which is the name of the track that I uh, that I just inserted it on. I could also have ch uh, chosen to insert a pl uh, my plugin on my master uh, channel, and I can just do that very quickly. Insert it here. Boom, it says connected to master. If I do that, I need to make sure that the gain is 0 dBFS all the way th from my uh, track here that I want to record all through uh, my door, and uh, I'd rather actually um, prefer to uh, not have that to think about. I'd rather just insert it here uh, on my uh, recording track here. Vocal, vocal, and we're ready to go. When doing recording, I find the RTA meter uh, particularly useful. And basically it's great at detecting frequencies that I can't hear or detect with my uh, monitoring system. The way that it's done is that I basically can go in here and the um, RTA is able to zoom in or zoom out on uh, different levels. Uh, I can select the range and I can select uh, a top level from where it wants to uh, or where it should, uh, should measure. The easiest way though is just go uh, out here and simply press the auto uh, feature. Auto will automatically zoom into where the levels are, and since there are no levels here now, uh, it will zoom into the lowest possible uh, levels. I don't have any hum in this uh, room, but if I had, it would show here uh, quite clearly that I uh, the, that I had a problem. Um, I, I can use even I can use this cursor frequency to zoom in on problematic frequencies to actually detect which frequencies uh, they are. So if I have a hum or a noise or something like that, I can actually find out which frequency that is. Obviously, when I uh, do my tracking and I have a pre-recorded vocal track here, uh, it will turn out to be very, very loud on all frequencies because now I've zoomed in on the very low frequencies. I simply press my auto feature again and you can see it zooms in on the relevant uh, levels. Again, when I stop and I want to detect if I have any problems in my recording room, I simply just press auto again and it zooms in on those levels that would normally be pro problematic and uh, I would be alarmed and um, I would then take action accordingly. Doing tracking, doing recording, avoiding overloads and clipping is of course uh, essential. We don't want clipping on our tracks. If we do that, we need to stop the recording immediately. I'm sure we all know that. I'm using the true peak meter in, that is included with ClearTM to detect my peaks. And uh, true peak is more precise and it's a more recent technology than other types uh, of peak meters. Uh, so I rely very much on that. A good number to aid, aim for when doing the mic check is minus 10 dBFS. Now that, of course, is very depending on what you're recording, but as a general term, I would aim for minus 10. And as you see here, when I press play on my pre-recorded track, that's actually where I'm uh, about. Uh, I press reset here and I can see that I can follow the true peak max measure here, minus 9.7, so 0 0.3 dBFS above it goes a bit on top of that as well. Now, I'm aiming for minus 10 dBFS. It doesn't mean that uh, I shouldn't go over it, but as a general reference point, minus t uh, 10 dBFS is a, is a good number, to me at least. I can go into the edit menu and set this to minus 10. It says peak alert, minus 10. It will give me an alert when I'm above minus 10, and it's not really critical to be above minus 10 dBFS, but uh, what it does is it shows me here uh, with a slightly different color on my true peak meter precisely where minus 10 dBFS is. So that's a good uh, visual input 
when I'm trying to aim for minus 10. Obviously, if I go above minus 10, it will give me a, a peak alert. I wouldn't worry about that at all. Generally, of course, the critical critical value here is uh, zero dB FS. Once you hit that, we're clipping, and you would avoid that, you would stop the recording. Um, but if you aim for minus 10 dB FS, I'm pretty sure that in, uh, in uh, most cases, you would never even come close to minus uh, or to, to zero dB FS. One important thing to be aware of when you do stereo recordings is if you have any uh, errors in, your, in the way you've set up your microphones or your cabling and stuff like that. If you have problems like that, you often run into phase errors and to detect th stuff like that, uh, ClaireTM has a correlation meter. The correlation meter shows the relation or the correlation between left and right in a stereo recording. Here I have a drum recording and I can see that the meter reads out towards plus one, well above zero. And that would be a very normal uh, readout on a meter like that. Good general number to aim for is about 75%. Plus minus, it very much depends on what you're recording, um, but 75% would be a very uh, good number to aim for. I have inserted a phase inverter plugin here on my left channel just to show you what happens if a stereo mix is out of phase. So I enable it here and you can see that since my uh, left channel is now um, inverted, there are indeed phase problems, and I can see that immediately on my correlation meter, it goes below zero. Now, depending on what you're recording, it's not necessarily an error situation that it goes below zero. You can have that also in an optimal setup, but normally you would go uh, above zero and uh, way towards the plus one. I'll just switch this off again, and you can see the normal reading here of my drums towards plus uh, one. So use the correlation meter to detect errors in your setup, your cabling, the way your microphones has, uh, have been set up, and stuff like that. At TC, we spent the last many years researching in the topic of loudness. Uh, loudness is about how an average person would perceive your music and how loud he would uh, perceive it. I use two loudness numbers. One is the momentary loudness, the other one is sliding loudness set to 10 seconds. Uh, this, the last one, the sliding loudness 10 seconds, is a relatively wide window um, and therefore the number will go up and down, will deviate uh, rather slowly, while the momentary is based on a 400 millisecond uh, measurement and therefore will be much more rapid in its uh, movements. Key number to go for to me is minus 20, at least when I do single source uh, tracking. And of course, this number depends very much on what kind of source that is. But as a general uh, thing, I go for minus 20, plus minus. Here I have a pre-recorded guitar track and uh, you can see that if we start looking at the momentary here, it concentrates around minus 23 and uh, or something like that. ClearTM has a cool feature where you can uh, assign the, the rotary encoder here to a number of features here. In this case, I've assigned it to the target loudness and I've set the target loudness to minus 20 because that's the number I'd like to aim for. And that means that minus 20 is placed at 12 o'clock here. So when I do my recording, I would try to concentrate my momentary loudness here around the 20. As you can see, it's actually slightly below the, below the, tw the minus 20. Um, and my sliding loudness number here confirms that. That looked over a window of 10 seconds it's actually minus 22.9, minus, minus 23 or something like that. So if this was a recording situation, I would tur probably turn up the gain a couple of dBs to, uh, to hit uh, the minus 20. 
the the reason to to use loudness and, and and the reason to go for a specific number here is basically if I do that with all my recordings, I have a fantastic foundation of of, of working with with, uh, with the mix once I start mixing because the individual tracks here will be approximately at the same at the same level, which is a great starting point. Also, I can use the radar, which is loudness over time, to actually track if my recording has an equal level through my recording. So say uh, if the guitar player suddenly drops in level for one of the other reasons, perhaps he's moving away from the microphone or something, it would me immediately show on my loudness history here. As you can see, I have the blue bold ring here. And since I've set the target loudness to minus 20, the blue bold ring is minus 20. So I can see not only on the momentary ring here, but also on my radar here, that my recording is pretty consistent and a bit below the 20, uh, the minus 20 that I was aiming, aiming for. So that's a couple of things that you could use loudness, where you can use loudness when you do your tracking or do your recording. Again, it's always uh, problematic to, to point out a specific number to aim for, but uh, so, 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 so take it with a grain of salt. I would say minus 20 is a good number when you do single sources, and loudness is indeed uh, great to use also at this stage uh, when, you, uh, when you produce uh, when you produce music.